Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Nanus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our playlist called Labs. In previous videos, we talked about serum osmolality, urine osmolality. We talked about beta-2 microglobulin. We talked about lactate dehydrogenase and lactic acid. We talked about anti-acetylcholine receptor antibodies, and we have discussed anti-parietal cell antibodies. Today, we have another antibody test for you. Anti-streptolysin O antibody titer, or simply ASO. We use this to diagnose what? streptococcal infections such as rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis so let's get started please watch the videos in this playlist in order if you want to learn about streptococci in great detail check out microbiology and infectious diseases playlist on youtube this playlist has staphylococcus aureus staphylococcus epidermidis staph saprophytica strep pyogenes strep pneumonia viridans even diphtheria and anthrax and much more streptococcus pyogenes is here it is also known as group a beta hemolytic strep beta hemolytic because it causes complete hemolysis on blood agar streptococcus because it's arranged in chains it is catalase negative but it is gram positive oh by the way why is strep pyogenes beta hemolytic you know why because it has hemolysin hemolytic hemolysin it's a protein or an enzyme that breaks down blood hemolysin of streptococcus is also known as streptolysin we have streptolysin s and streptolysin o you will make antibodies against them the antibodies against streptolysin o are very important we can measure these in your blood to establish whether or not you have a streptococcal infection look at this streptolysin or hemolysin is one of the enzymes made by streptococcus pyogenes because streptococcus pyogenes can make four enzymes or four main enzymes streptolysin s Streptolysin O, streptokinase, TPA, and DNAs. You can make antibodies against all of them, but the ones that are clinically relevant are antibodies against streptolysin O, also known as ASO, and the antibodies against DNAs B, anti DNAs B antibodies. What's the purpose of streptolysin O? It's a hemolysin, it breaks down blood. So anytime you try to form a clot around streptococcus, it will burst through that clot and evade your immune response. And this will help group A strep spread all over your body, causing cellulitis, necrotizing fasciitis, sepsis, etc. What's the function of DNAs? It breaks down your DNA and any nucleic acid material such as those in the pus and when you break down all of the hurdles the bacteria will spread more in your body and in the words of the comedian bill burr quote it's got a good spread what people did not understand that he was talking about streptococcus pyogenes streptococcus pyogenes can lead to gazillion diseases we have talked about many of them before don't forget throat infections skin infections and the two disasters rheumatic fever and post streptococcal glomerulonephritis let's review strep throat or pharyngitis after exposure give it two to four days and you'll have sudden onset of fever sore throat headache exudative suppurative i.e pussy pharynx tons of pus tender lymph nodes in the cervical area if this throat infection is not treated properly i am at a high risk of two disasters the first affects the heart the second affects the kidney the one that affects the heart is called rheumatic fever the one that affects the kidney is called post streptococcal glomerulonephritis any of these two can happen after the infection of the streptococcus pyogenes strain that causes the throat infection however the strain that causes skin infection can only cause kidney disease afterwards not heart disease so it really depends on the strain and the substrain of streptococcus pyogenes you can call that cardiogenic or nephrogenic for example the one that causes pharyngitis is cardiogenic and nephrogenic the one that causes skin infection is only nephrogenic we talked about rheumatic fever before in my videos on streptococcus pyogenes please pause and review your jones criteria molecular mimicry is caused by the m protein your immune system was trying to attack attack the bacteria instead you ended up attacking your own heart because your immune system got confused because the two particles looked similar molecular mimicry we also talked about post streptococcal glomerulonephritis before after the throat infection give it one to three weeks before you know it there is blood in the urine or after scarlet fever or pyoderma skin infection 
I can also get kidney disease. Hypertension, hematuria, fever, and proteinuria, periorbital edema, and oliguria. This is a nephritic syndrome for the most part. Diagnosis, anti-ASO antibodies, anti-DNA antibodies. Anti-DNA antibodies will be there. Anti-ASO might or might not be there in case of kidney disease. Why not? We'll explain this soon. When you're looking for an antibody, this is called detection method of lab diagnosis for the bacterial infection because we have gazillion ways to diagnose streptococcus infection. Anti-ASO and anti-DNA are just antibody detection techniques. Anti-ASO will be positive in rheumatic fever. It may or may not be positive in kidney disease. Why is that? Because cholesterol in the skin irreversibly inhibits streptolysin O, which means you will not make antibodies against them because you did not see them. Translation. Since rheumatic fever can be only caused after a throat infection, never a skin infection, throat infection does not have cholesterol. Your throat does not have cholesterol, which means you will not block the streptolysin O, which means ASO are more likely to be positive with heart disease. But in kidney disease, well, I don't know. The infection could be coming from the throat or coming from the skin. If it's coming from the throat, positive ASO titer. If it's coming from the skin, negative or low titer. Because skin equals cholesterol and other skin lipids which inhibit streptolysin O. And that's why ASO antibodies are positive in rheumatic fever. May or may not be positive in acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Now you know why, something that your woke professor will never tell you. So to recap, ASO antibodies can be used to diagnose pharyngitis, to diagnose rheumatic fever, and many cases of streptococcus nephritic syndrome known as post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. But we do not use ASO to diagnose skin infections, such as pyoderma. We do not use it to diagnose necrotizing fasciitis, cellulitis, or even erysipelas, because skin disease equals lipids and cholesterol which inhibit the ASO. Conversely, anti-DNA antibodies are helpful for throat infection, check, rheumatic fever, check, nephritic syndrome, check, and the pyodermas, your erysipelas, your cellulitis, your necrotizing fasciitis, and any other skin disease caused by strep because cholesterol does not affect the DNAs. Medicine makes so much sense once you understand what the flip you're talking about. Let's review the diseases caused by streptococcus pyogenes from Picmonic. You can check the link in the description. This website is beautiful. It has more than 1,400 animated medical mnemonics for you. Streptococcus pyogenes, the stripper pie genie, can lead to pyogenic diseases, lots of pus on the pie, as well as toxigenic diseases. Here is a toxic genie. The pyogenic diseases include pyogenic pharyngitis. Here is pharaoh with an exudate. Impetigo, here is emperor tiger, and cellulitis, cell phone with inflammation. The toxigenic diseases include scarlet fever, here is a scarlet fever beaver with a strawberry tongue. The word scarlet means red, of course. After knowing the pyogenic and the toxigenic diseases, do we have other categories? Yes, we have the immunogenic diseases caused by strep pyogenes. And these include one in the heart and one in the kidney. The one in the heart is rheumatic fever. Here's the Roman fever beaver. The one in the kidney is acute post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. Acute glomer. And don't forget that the rheumatic fever is triggered by the molecular mimicry of the M protein. We want to learn more about penicillins, which can be used to treat rheumatic fever and post-streptococcal glomerulonephritis. What are the different types of penicillin? How about sensitive, resistant? And what's the story behind the beta-lactamase? And what the flip is MRSA? How about Versa? What about VRE? You can learn about all of these by downloading my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. How about the pharmacopoeia that can help manage cardiac diseases? You can learn about them by downloading my cardiac pharmacology course at medicosisperfectionetics.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionetics, where medicine makes perfect sense.